welcome back to the shop and today we're going to talk about um, brakes, obviously brakes. So we did a uh, bit of uh, the SV and people uh, sent me quite a few emails, emails and stuff saying they don't understand or basically what happens. So I'm literally going to record quite a few videos today just on this because um, there's going to be a little question um, video you'll see in a second and all the rest of it. But let's get to it. So what I have here is the ER5 um, braking system. I have the caliper on the floor, but we don't need the caliper. Don't worry about that. But we'll just concentrate on this section. So basically this section, and this was the old school way of doing it, is called the master cylinder and reservoir combo. Uh, we have a brake lever and basically what happens is is that you have a pivot pin um, that goes in there like so and then your brakes pivot and then what happens is is that you have this um, arm that's part of your brake lever there that pushes um, some gubbins that go in there. If you can see that, there we go, I need to be here. <laughs> uh, that go into this, just this bottomless pit of despair. So, uh, one thing I want to say, I was just cleaning this up slightly. There's a oil like bushing in this. Nice Kawasaki, I like it. Um, <laughs> so, we know what the lever does, and we'll talk about leverage and stuff, and that's a separate video. But, what I want to talk about is the actual uh, master cylinder and the reservoir. So, did I tighten these up? Oh no, we're all right. So one thing I want, there's little things we're going to point out. So number one is you'll see that it says all this gubbins on it, but it says dot four. I'll see if I can ring you in for that. Have you noticed that the dot four bit is higher? You can see there, look, the two bits that say dot four are higher. Generally because uh, only use brake fluid from a sealed container, blah, 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 blah. Uh, clean full of cap before removing, warning, blah, blah, something in French. But it says dot four and they're raised because if all this gets rubbed off, which some of them you see and they do, especially for the rear and all the rest of it, um, the last thing to go in a sense, because it's double the height, is the dot four bit basically. So they're taking into consideration that this might wear out. And um, if and when it does, um, you'll still be able to tell what fluid is regardless of all the bullshit warnings, which is, you know, a feature, let me put it that way, but someone's thought of that, which is quite nice. Any road, so this entire system, this is for the front brake, and this is, like I say, a reservoir uh, master cylinder combo, or just MC. Uh, you can see there's got our little sight glass there on the side. This is where our main banjo bolt goes, and you'll see there's this nubbins here, this protrusion, this nubbins is basically to keep the brake line from rotating. So the feed for the brake line for this is uh, over the top, I think, I can't remember. But basically these little bars are to stop the, it rotating and possibly undoing or something stupid like that when you're moving your handlebars and all that rubbish. So basically when you, top, you take your cap off, on this example, it's not the same for all of them, but you'll see that there's this um, nylon cover and then there's this diaphragm. Now you may open this and your diaphragm is all like this, you know. All you need to do is take that out, give it a clean, and obviously I've been in here and cleaned everything, and just fold it back. And we'll talk about this diaphragm first. What happens is, is as your brake pads wear, um, the, color, the brake pads have to get closer together, which means your pistons come further out, which means that you're basically increasing the volume of your braking system. So that's why you have a reservoir with a sight glass, so you can see, and that one's all scratched to buggery. But basically, the um, uh, brake fluid level will drop. And because of that, because this is a sealed container, um, basically the outside pressure will cause, uh, well, you know, could cause this to crack, break, leak, whatever. It's not a good thing. So basically what we need is we need the volume in here, in our reservoir, we need this to be basically filled with air. There's a problem. You know, as the fluid level drops, air needs to go in. Otherwise, you just, yeah, it's just a world of hurt and all that shite. But... We can't have air going here because air has moisture in it, uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic and getting water in here, corrosion, all sorts of nasties and the boiling point of water and so on. And the bulk modulus which we'll do a video on. But anyway, this is why we don't use brake fluid, uh, water as a brake fluid, any road. So basically what we, do is, what we need to do is as this brake fluid drops, this diaphragm can basically follow that and maintain the volume inside this reservoir. And for that to happen, that means that on the other side, on this side, 
this volume, as this starts to collapse and fall in, it means that this volume is getting bigger, so this can fill with air. So basically, there is brake fluid on this side, and there's literally air on this side. And the way this gets in is if you look at this cover, uh, give me some pointy. You look at this cover, you can see these vents either side that go around the screw. So that little hole in the side there, you can see, basically air can sneak in here, goes around the threads of your screw and into this top section. And then this nylon cover goes over the top and you'll notice it covers up these vents. Apart from there's a little tiny hole right in the middle. Oh, let's see if you can see that. You see that little tiny hole right in the middle? That's basically how, because this brake fluid isn't dropping dramatically, it's just basically a leak. So in a sense what happens is, is when this goes on the top like so, and imagine this covers on the top, it sneaks in through the little holes, comes onto the top bit, makes its, or is it, no it is that way isn't it, yeah. Because this cover is sat like this, it will leak around here, leak through that hole, and then you can see there's this kind of divider plate stuff. But basically what it does is it just allows air to equalise the pressure basically on this side. So that's all that done. Like I say, if it's all folded down and crippled, pull it out like that. Pull it out and just basically straighten it all out and all the rest of it. Um, so that's that bit done. The top of the reservoir cap, so that's how it basically sits on the inside. Now what you'll see is on the inside is you'll, te you'll, blah, 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 you'll see two holes. Can we get a good shot of that? There, you can see there's two holes in the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll do what I did before because that kind of worked out. I'll take a picture of it. Right, so what you'll see from this picture I've just taken, <laughs> you'll see that there's a big orifice, a big hole um, on the front and then there's this little tiny hole um, with a chamfered edge. And you, I can't really see, you can't really see the chamfered edge on the other side. Um, but basically this is your inlet port, the bigger one, and then this little tiny little port is what you call a compensating port. Your compensating port is what basically makes up for the fact um, that your brake pads are um, contracting over time as they wear. So where are all the gubbins that go into this, this bottomless pit of despair? These gubbins are here. So basically what we have is we have a plunger on this side. So this plunger is basically what sits against your brake lever and that's basically how you move this. Um, this is the piston for the master cylinder. The reason why we call it a master cylinder, well actually I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so you have your plunger, we have this rubber johnny that sits on here, this is all fucking crusty and knackered, basically just stops any shit getting in. Uh, there's a circlip that goes basically over there with these weird little tabs on, that basically holds that piston and stops it backing out, so when you put that inside your master cylinder, there's no way this thing can just fire out. Um, but basically what the, we've got some components here, we've got the plunger section, we've got the actual scroll section of the piston, we've got a seal here and a seal here. Now you'll notice that these are angled seals. What this means is that when you compress your fluid, um, fluid will back up on this side. How oh, well can you see that? There we go. Let's actually zoom you in a bit. So, fluid can uh, fluid on this side, if it pushes against the seal, it actually pushes the seal out, so it basically causes it to seal. So there's nowhere for the fluid to go. This is when you're pushing this way and compressing the fluid. Um, when you let off the brakes, if the brake pads have moved too far because there's, or not too far, further because there's wear, what will happen is, is that compensation circuit that leaks basically into here. Um, what happens is, is if there's a void when you let go of the pressure, when you back off the pressure, if there's a void, it's a lower pressure here than it is this side, and the actual compensation fluid, if you want to put it that way, can actually push past this seal, because you see it has that lip where it can push past and basically fill that void. Um, on this side, your main seal basically, this stops fluid on this side. There's no fluid on this side, this is the outside world, so there's no fluid on this side. And the fluid is allowed to return to the um, reservoir through our inlet port. So when you apply pressure and then you back that pressure off, that fluid is allowed to return. So in a sense, they call it an inlet port, but really it should be an in and out port or just a flow port, whatever you want to call it. So now we've actually seen the actual physical components of that sitting in there and oh, fucking hell these seals are bastards sometimes saying that's a bit dry, I shouldn't really do that. Um, put all this gubbins back together and get it out of the way for a second. What I want to talk about is brake fluid in general um, and how these systems work. So I've got the age old, you can't see anything, I've got the age old 
example. So basically what we do is, is this is a um, hydraulic system of equal volume. So the volume in here is the same as the volume in here. And if I apply a force here and push down, this is actually brake fluid in here. You can see that we have the same amount of displacement on this side as we do this side. All this hunky-dory. You know what I mean? Wow, look at that shit. Absolutely awesome. So, what we do is, in a sense, is this is our piston at our caliper. And I've got a baby Brembo. Look at this fucking thing. This thing's tiny. Um, and basically we have our brake pads, we have our piston in here, and then what we have is we have a passage between the two. So this is actually a dual piston. Fucking tiny thing it is like this. So that sits together like that, this caliper. And you can see there's an O-ring between the two because that's basically where fluid is passed from one to the other. So in a sense this is like the SV brake, is this one on its own. And basically all they've done is just doubled up and put two pistons, two pads. Let's see if we can use our um, compressed air trick to get this fucker out. No, that's not compressed air, you dickhead. That's fucking brake cleaner. <laughs> oh, well, forget that. <laughs> Cut. Any road, yeah. So we saw with the SV and all the rest of it, if you push air or fluid into here, then this piston pops out. It's because there's a, a really small uh, passage around the back. One of these stupid guns. Sweet! There you go, you see? Get yourself one of these with a fucking straw on it. And you can pop out your piston. No need for fucking compressors. See, that's what this channel is all about. And then that basically pushes the piston out, which causes these pads, and these pads are absolutely fucking done. But that just basically pushes the pad outwards against the caliper. But uh, in this example, it's the same kind of thing. This is your uh, brake lever, your master cylinder. So this is our master cylinder. Let's write that on it. Where's all the fucking pens gone? This is our master cylinder, and this is what we call our slave cylinder. So in a sense, your slave cylinder does what it's told when the master cylinder does its shit. So what happens is, is that when you push on your, um, your actual uh, piston inside your uh, master cylinder, is that we get a movement of this side that pushes our brake calipers back. Now this is the question, what happens now? Because now we pump this much fluid into here. Now what happens? How does it return? Well, the return spring, in a sense, pushes back on this caliper like so. And we've introduced air because these aren't brilliant seals, which we'll use as an example in a minute. But basically that causes a void and it's the outside air pressure that actually pushes um, the piston back. So because it's this void, you've got to remember there's no such thing as suction. The spring returns this, and then the outside air pressure is what pushes it back. Now, I don't know how well this is going to work, because these aren't high-pressure systems. This might squirt me in the face with fucking <laughs> hydraulic fluid. <laughs> oh, well, all in the name of science. So, basically, we've got air between this line now, and as you can see, as I'm pushing this, this master cylinder is hardly moving. So when we go to there, we've got a lot of air in there and you can see all these bubbles forming and all the rest of it. And what we'll do is we press this one and I'm pressing and I'm pressing and I'm pressing. If I put some resistance here, we can compress the air. Between the two. Depends how good these seals are. Nah, it's not going to really work in this system. Although, actually, no, there we could do it. So if I hold both and press, you can see there, look. This is held solid. And you can see there, look, I can compress the air. That compression there. See that bubble in the middle? Oops. There, look, we're compressing the air. Which means that on this side, on our slave side, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. It's my fight between my hands. So that's the reason why having brake... Um, I've got fucking brake fluid all my hands now. That's the reason why having oil in your... Uh, air in your system is really, really bad. Because um, 
you can just basically you push and nothing happens it also means that if you have a full travel of just say i don't know three centimeters 30 millimeters something like that you can actually reduce that by half which means you've got half the force that you're transferring so with this simple demonstration you can kind of see what's going on um basically what happens is we're uh, we'll do a a video about torque multiple um, force multipliers or mechanical advantage as it's known um and all the rest of it and what it's like we'll also um someone asked me a question about um racing lines and over mudguard lines uh someone said about bleeding them as well as a pain in the ass and stuff like that we'll all get to that that's um in some upcoming videos that we'll do on this i hope that makes sense and i hope this was a, a you know an easy enough follow to follow demonstration of exactly what goes on and i'll see you in a bit <laughs>